Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're gonna to talk about modular tech systems. So this week we're gonna build on what we talked about in our tutorial 110, Liquid Write-On. If you recall, we basically use a text animator to isolate one letter at a time and apply different effects to that layer. So here we're gonna do that same kind of thing, but in a more modular fashion. And what I mean by that is that we can actually take these layers to build a bigger, more complex text animation so that we can have both variety and complexity without doing too much additional work. This also basically gives you more flexibility than a straight text animator gives you. So rather than go through all of these examples, let's take a look at how we can set this up for a single complex animation. So here you can see we've combined a lot of those elements together. So you can tell I actually have a couple of these effects turned off, and we can make an even more complex animation by turning these on. It gets a little crazy, but however it looks is up to you. All right, so let's take a look at one of these and see how they're set up. So the most important thing we have here is a layer expression control, and I named it text source. So now instead of this whole phrase, if we just double clicked on here, we can type in just power, and this whole thing will change. And there we go, we're all set. So I'm gonna do, undo that, because I like this phrase. All right, so if we look at this layer right here, right, we have just this single text piece soloed out. With all of these things turned off, you can see this is just a squashed version of the text that we have. If I step through it, you can see what happens. So on this layer, there's also some masks that are in here, and they move. I'm not going to go through that whole thing completely, because this file is going to be available to download. Unlike our normal route, because I think I'm going to plan to make this into a product eventually, this project is actually going to be up on Gumroad as a pay-as-you-want kind of thing. So it could be free, or it could be whatever you want. But that way, if you sign up for it, you'll actually get notified when the product is available. Suffice it to say, in this case, this mask just kind of oscillates up and down. I'm using one of our previous tutorials to modify the mask points. So they move up and down with Y using a sign function. So then we're doing an offset to move it over a little bit. Directional blur, a couple of more directional blurs, the levels to crush it back down, and then a turbulent displace to kind of make it wiggle. If I click this off, you can see what it looks like as we go through it. So each one of these things is kind of built like that. The idea behind them is all very similar, but they're all built differently. And some of them even use different text animators, different pacings. But the main point is that they all point back to that text layer at the bottom. Some of them, like these sliding pieces ones, actually even point to a displacement map that we have in here. I would actually have a map source layer, but unfortunately displacement map does not let you keyframe, and thus you can't add an expression to the displacement map layer. So that's a want want for us. So that kind of sucks. In the product version of this though, I think I have a way around that. But other than that, adding a new one of these things is as simple as dropping it in and then picking the text source layer. If you want, you can actually even just parent these to this text source layer that you want. So if you actually add movement to this at all, they'll all go with it as well. Having this text source layer selector thing actually just gives you a little bit more flexibility. In this case, we're even using one of these as a mat to block out some stuff as it goes across. Like these pieces that are missing out of the word not. So now by adding these and shifting them in time a little bit, you can actually build the thing the way that you want it to be. So it can be super complex or super simple. So this is a quick tutorial, but it shows you how if you take something that we've built before, you can expand on it to make something even more complex and useful. So that's why I always encourage you guys to go do that. So if you want to build these into presets, you can actually take this even further. Although that's not exactly what I'm planning to do for the product version. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And also don't forget to check out the post about the 15K giveaway. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.